Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I want to show you four CSS Grid layouts that you can use to lay out content on your site. I think CSS Grid can be kind of confusing because it's hard to kind of imagine what, when you might use it. I want to show you, especially when it comes to global layouts, kind of where you put major sections on your site, that CSS Grid can be really helpful. And then I'll also show you how to use it on components like cards and things like that. And then I'll show you a more advanced use case for laying out pages differently on mobile or tablet or desktop. So let me kind of walk you through them one at a time very quickly, and then I'll show you how we did it. Okay, so first of all, you got these three uh, columns that are always going to stack perfectly like this, no matter what you do. Next, I'm going to show you how, no matter what the size of your page is, to have the header up top, the rest of your content fill the rest of the screen, and then your footer at the bottom. Then I'm going to show you how to stack out these cards that are auto-responsive without any kind of media queries at all, and they'll actually keep snapping, and they stay in line not just horizontally, but unlike Flex, they'll actually stay vertically aligned as well, so they're actually always going to be the exact same size. And then finally, for the more complex layout, we're going to have here on desktop, where you've got a sidebar, the content, a header, and a footer. And then as you get a little bit smaller here, we're actually going to flip the sidebar over here and make it a little smaller on a tablet. And then when you get all the way down, we'll have the content here and the sidebar below. And you can do this all with CSS Grid. Okay, so I've got just uh, these different layouts laid out over this way. And for styling so far, all I've done is basically say, hey, everything needs to be at least... Uh, 100 uh, pixels high, and then I've added colors. So let me pull up this live code here, and as you can see, they're kind of just all stacked, depending on how many divs are in each of these sections, uh, they're all stacked right after each other. Let's go ahead and start then in, with the first layout that we just called uh, three calls. So first of all, we're gonna say display of grid, and with grid, you're gonna actually declare this on the parent, just like Flexbox. You can adjust things with the children, but you can also just do most of the work from the parent itself. So the first thing where I'm going to show you is something called grid template columns, and I've just expanded this with Emmet, but you can do it however you want. You're just telling grid, which normally is going to run from top to bottom unless you declare columns, uh, you're going to tell it here to repeat auto for three times, just like that. You see, as soon as I do that, it actually switches and says, hey, I, I'm going to use three columns and lay out whatever content I have in those three columns. And auto means they're just going to adjust as necessary, and the browser figures out that for you. So that's pretty easy. That's the first one. The second one here, you might remember what we want to do is make this one take up the rest of the uh, vertical height, and then just have the header and the footer be auto. All right, so in other words, take up the exact amount they need to, and no more and no less. So let's come down here. This one was called fill height. So first of all, we need to say we want it to take up 100% view height at a minimum. It may take up more than that, but at least as a, at a minimum, it needs to take up 100% view height. Then we're going to say display grid. Again, I'm just expanding that with Emmet. And then this time, rather than declaring columns, if I just save this here, you'll notice nothing really changes. It'll just stack these out. Um, but I want to actually tell it, hey, this one I want to take up the most space. These two I just want to take up their minimum that they need. So this time I'm not going to say grid template columns, I'm going to say grid template rows, and then let me expand this out. I'm not going to repeat because they're not all going to be the same. Instead, what I'm going to do is say auto 1FR, which stands for one fraction, it's, it's a new unit with grid, and then auto one more time. If I save it here, you'll notice what happens is the first row takes up the amount it needs, 100% or 100 pixels, remember that's what I set for all the divs. The second row takes up whatever remaining space there is because the last one is also auto. Okay, so that's two of the four grid modern layouts, uh, and you can see how quick and easy they are to get started. This automatically expands, and no matter what the size of your screen is, you don't have to figure this out with JavaScript or something like that. I actually did a video on that not too long ago, and then it struck me when I was editing it, oh, duh, I could just do that in CSS Grid, and I just didn't think about it. All right, uh, let me show you the third one. This one is called Auto Responsive Cards. And inside here, we had a bunch of those cards. Let me scroll down here so you can see it. And right now, you can't see them because they're just all stacked right after each other. So let's do a few things here. First of all, we're going to say Display of Grid. And then next, we're going to say Grid Template Columns. And here, we're going to do some uh, kind of a magic thing I think you can do with Grid that really makes it easy to let the browser figure out all the hard math. We're going to say auto fit, and then we're going to call min max, and we're going to give it two values. 
The first one is the minimum we want it to be, which will be 250 pixels. Remember, it has to fit on mobile. We're not going to use media queries here, so this will do all the work for us. So it'll be all the way from 250 pixels up to one fraction. So share the, the rest of the available space. Now in order so we can see kind of what's going on here, let's first of all add a padding of one rem around the rim. And then you can see already um, it starts to show that, hey, we've got an extra card here. Then we're going to say grid uh, gap of one rem. So in other words, hey, figure out the spacing between them. Anytime you've got cards stacking against each other, give me a rem between that. Now this is actually pretty well supported in all modern browsers, this grid gap, which is one of the reasons I like using grid, because I don't have to worry about like adding random margins on left or right or up or down or, or whatever. You see, just by doing this, as we move these cards, they'll just snap down as necessary. So they get down to 250 pixels, and then when you can't fit two like that anymore, they'll go to one, and they're now using this one fraction. Then I come back up this way right here. There are 250 pixels. Now they're going to keep stretching and stretching and stretching until they can fit three 250 pixels wide. And then now they're just going to keep stretching until they can hit four, et cetera, et cetera. And again, you can see how quick and easy that is. Unlike Flex, of course, you're not letting this one stretch all the way across, but you are getting both horizontal and vertical alignment. And sometimes that's, sometimes that's what you want. All right, the last one, the final one, is a little bit more complex, but let me start with something simple, and then we'll kind of move on from there. The class on this section is Responsive uh, Sidebar. First of all, we're going to say Display Grid once again, and then let's scroll down so you can kind of see what's going on here. Automatically, they've stacked up now, just one after the other, and let's do a few things. Let's start, first of all, with a mobile version, and here we are going to use media queries, but we're going to say what we want to do is declare Grid Template rows, auto, 2fr, 1fr, and auto. Now, just judging by what we've done up top here, you know that what this will do is set it to where this one's going to take up 100, the bottom one here is going to take up 100 pixels, and then these two are going to split the remaining value. Well, how are they going to calculate it? They're going to calculate it like this. Two fraction here and one fraction here. So this one's always going to be double of whatever this is, no matter the screen size. So that's on mobile. But remember, as we expanded our uh, other version here, the kind of the finished code, it then went to this view, and then finally we switched the sidebar over to the right. So how do we make adjustments based on uh, the, the size of the screen? I'm going to come back over here. We're going to do a few things. If I come over here to my HTML, you'll notice that I've actually given these things classes, header, content, sidebar, and footer. Now, I don't have to call them that. I could do whatever I want, but since we're going to name the areas by those, I figured I would just add classes the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and say header class is going to have a grid area called header. Now, let me add all these in, and while I do it, I'm going to explain exactly what I'm doing here. So I've got a header, I've got content, and with each of these, I'm actually saying, hey, I want you to name it this in the browser, and that way you can kind of keep track of where I want to move this thing. So we've got a sidebar, and then finally, uh, I've got a footer. Now right now, we haven't used these names anywhere, and when I save it, it's kind of confused. It's not sure exactly where to put these things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up here to our responsive sidebar class, and I'm going to add grid template areas here. So what I've done is I've added air, grid template areas on the parent, and then I've added a grid area name for each of the individual children. Now, what I can do now is I can simply come down here and I can declare where I want these things to be. So I could say, I want the header to be here. Then I'm just going to add a return and hit, I want content to be next. Then I want the sidebar. And then finally, I want the footer. Notice I'm adding these all in quotation marks. And then I'll end it finally with that semicolon and save it. And it should stack right back up as we had it originally. Now, of course, you wouldn't need to do this if all you wanted was the mobile version because it works fine without naming these areas. And once you name them, you have to actually add them as grid template areas. Where this becomes powerful, though, is you can use these names to quickly lay out everything else on your page. Now, let me jump in here and show you the Chrome tools uh, just so you can kind of see how it works in here. And each of these tools is going to act a little bit differently. But let's come in here to this auto auto-responsive sidebar here, and you'll notice that these things actually have names associated with them. And if I come over here to Layout, and I hit Show Area Names, and then I come down here and I select this one here, I'm getting now the name Content, 
or the name header. It's kind of hard to see there at footer sidebar. So it's actually telling me the names that I've declared there. And that's going to be really helpful for us as we kind of move throughout this. Let me see if I can't pull this down some and zoom up here so we can kind of see what's going to happen as we adjust things. So that, now that I've got all those, let me come in here and I'm going to go ahead and declare a media query. We're going to say only screen and min width of 768 pixels. Okay, so starting at 768 pixels, which is a typical tablet size. Now inside here, I need to redeclare my class. So let me come up here. I'm just going to copy this down and we can adjust it as we need to. Of course, I don't need to redeclare display grid, but I do want to actually change where the areas are located. Now, rather than one column, I now want two columns. And I can just add a second column by just saying header again. And it realizes now I want two columns. And now I want this sidebar over this way. And then finally, I want the footer again to be all the way across the bottom. So just like that, I now have two columns layered across. Now I need to make a couple other of quick changes because now I need to actually tell it how I want the rows to work. Before I said I had four rows, and now really I only have three rows. So what I'm going to do now is come in here and say I want it to be auto, one fraction, and auto. And you notice that this is the same uh, as up top where we wanted this to take up the available space and just have a header and a footer, except now I'm also splitting these columns. The other thing I need to do is that I need to say grid template columns, and now I want to tell it how I want it to work with any time I have two columns next to each other. Now these that are the same, it's not going to make any difference, but these two, it would actually will decide what space each of those is going to take up. So I'll come in here and the first thing I'm going to do is say I want it to take up 250 pixels and then one fraction or the remaining space. And if I save it here now, it's going to adjust to, to match exactly what I've got over this way. If I come back down here, let's see if I can select this. And you can see now this says sidebar, this says content, this says header, this is also the header, and footer and footer. So you see how it's adjusting just based off of this media query and how I've named these different grid areas. So we've got one final one we're going to do here. I'm going to copy all of this down. And this time we're going to say, hey, once you get to a desktop size, which we're going to say is 10 or 1024 pixels, then I want you to make one more adjustment. Now I can do this in a couple of different ways. I want it to take up this content to switch sides here and then now to take up twice as much space. So the one way I could do this, of course, is just to come here and switch it like this and then say this needs to be 2FR and 1FR. And when I save it and I get out large enough here, it'll actually switch like that. I could also come in here and add three columns and say header, uh, content, content, and then footer. And then rather than saying laying out my columns exactly as I want, I could just say auto and it'll figure it out based off of the grid template areas that I've laid here for it. So either way, that will work, and it's fully responsive as I move. It'll adjust and switch around and do whatever I need it to do with just a few lines of code here. So hopefully these four layouts give you an idea of how you might use CSS Grid, especially when it comes to kind of global layout on your site. I often use Grid to kind of set out everything on the page, and then I use Fluxbox and Grid, kind of depending on what works best for the area, to lay out individual components. But Grid is great for those kind of global layouts, especially when it comes to adding gaps between things, controlling the size of things with the fraction units. Uh, all of those are super helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help. I'll put a few links in the description as well. But until next time, thanks so much for watching and happy coding.